Hey everybody, how's it going? My name's Mayuko and welcome back to my channel. We're talking about technical interviews today. So today we're gonna talk again about technical interviews. I've talked about technical interviews before on my channel. How many times have I talked about it? I'm not sure, but at least once or twice. But it is such an important part of the software engineering interview process. So it is worth talking about it again and 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 again. For those of you who don't know, the technical interview is a standard part of the three-part interview process that most tech companies use to hire software engineers. Like I've never not done a technical interview for any of the jobs that I've had. There's always been at least one technical interview part for the interview process. And yes, I know that you probably know that because you're probably like a college student studying computer science or something similar, or you're trying to break into the industry with a career change when you went to a coding bootcamp. So you know, data structures and algorithms is a very important part of the technical interview process. And I know you know that because you probably use tools like Lead Code or the Cracking the Coding interview book, and those are all great tools. But today I am here to talk about what most people get wrong about the technical interview. By the way, I did make a video about how to study for these interviews a very, very long time ago. I might even remake the video because it was so long ago, but you can find that right here. So yes, there is something that a lot of people get wrong about the technical interview. It's not that you don't know your data structures enough, and it's not that you didn't study your time complexities enough either. It's also not that you didn't study your algorithms. It's the behavioral side of interviews, AKA the behavioral assessment that happens during the technical portion of the interview. Today, we're gonna to talk about that because I was a software engineer for at least six years professionally, more if you count internships and stuff like that. And I've been able to talk to a bunch of different people about the technical interview. Specifically, this time I got to talk to Sophie, who is a CEO of Formation. Her and her team coach people to become the best software engineers they can, which, you know, big part of that is the interview process. So I had to meet her and talk to her and pick her brain about this whole thing about behavioral parts of the technical interview. Also, thank you so much to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. You can learn more about them and why they're a great source to study for your technical interviews at the very end of the video, so stick around. Okay, so you might be thinking, hold up, Mayuko, but I thought in a technical interview, the first thing that you're supposed to do is code, right? They're there to assess you on your coding skills, so you should maximize the time that you're spent coding. Honestly, that's actually not the right thing to do at all. One of the first mistakes that I see people make is start to code right away. <laughs> That's pretty much never, never the right first step in a, in like solving a problem. I sometimes use this like analogy of imagine that you like hired a contractor to come and build a new deck in your backyard or something. And they come in and literally 30 seconds into it, they're like tearing things apart without having asked you for like dimensions or like doing like a landscape, like safety survey to make sure you have the right support structures. You're just like, not not trusting this engineer, right? And so um, the very first thing when approaching a new problem is exploring the bounds of the problem by like asking a bunch of questions. I really, really, really like that analogy that Sophie used about contractors and creating and fixing stuff because that is literally how it's like. So as a fix, before you jump straight into coding, start with pseudocode. That way you can work through your logic and your solution without getting bogged down in the details of if else statements and syntax and APIs and functions and stuff like that. Because the most important part of the technical interview is to see how you think and if you can solve a problem, not about whether you can like code super duper well, like at the end of the day, software engineering is about problem solving. And so before getting bogged down in the details of coding, literally just get your logic right. This also allows your interviewer to step in in case your logic is wrong. Because when you start with pseudocode, you can check in with your interview and be like, yo, am I on the right path? Does it sound good? Is there anything that I'm missing? And they can kind of course correct and lead you towards the right solution. Also, the right solution is also subjective because there's not always a one right solution. There's maybe multiple right right solutions, but a right solution. And now you might be thinking, all right then, Mayuko, so maybe we don't spend all of our time coding, but the thing that they're gonna assess you on at the end of the day for whether they're gonna give you a job is the code itself, right? No, no, that's not the case. Because here's the thing, if you can't explain your solution, then how do they know if you know how to code? 
Because here's the thing, you could be reciting a solution from memory, you know, but software engineering is about encountering problems and solving those problems, most of which you've never seen before with the similar conditions and constraints and stuff. The next kind of behavioral thing that I would say to focus on is the explanation of your approach. I see a lot of people, one, not explaining it at all, so it's missing or explaining it way too much, like going into completely unnecessary detail and going on for minutes and minutes and minutes on how, how the solution works. Sophie touches on a really important point here too, that it's like, it seems like it's easy to explain your solution to approach, but it's actually not. It's, it really requires some skill to do that. But for anybody who wants to excel in the industry, have a long-term career, work at really great companies with really great people on really great teams, it's something that you're really gonna wanna practice. Ideally, you're gonna wanna be able to explain that solution in a relatively concise way. Like one way that I benchmark whether I can really explain things or not is if I can explain them in plain spoken terms. Like if I were to explain this concept or solution to someone who doesn't even know how to code, doesn't know the technology, will they get it? Obviously in practice, it doesn't quite work this way, but it's also really easy to tell when a candidate is like BSing their way through things and telling just like buzzwords after buzzwords. Cause you can kind of tell after a while, they don't really know what they're saying. But yes, all of this thing of like explaining your thought process is definitely easier said than done, but there are ways to practice. You can practice by pulling up like a practice problem or something and then literally record yourself working through the problem and then also giving the solution. So literally just like set up a camera somewhere and talk to the camera and then watch it over and see if it makes sense. And when you are watching it over, just kind of like give yourself feedback on things like, are your word choices succinct? Are you able to follow your like thought pattern from step to step? Are you asking enough questions about the problem? Are you making the right assumptions? Are you being clear about what your assumptions are when you're working through the problem? Are you getting stuck too long on any one thing? Are you not getting stuck long enough on something? It's no doubt a hard skill, but it is something that you can absolutely get better at with consistent effort. Hmm, interesting, interesting. I'd never thought about it that way. I just always thought the technical interviews were there to like just grade you on your solution and your thought process. Not exactly. Technical interviewers, more often than not, are going to be the people that you work with. And when it comes to actually working together, like imagine yourself actually being coworkers, no one's gonna have the right solution. Like you're kind of gonna have to figure it out together. The role of the interviewer in an interview is to essentially come prepared with a prompt and witness you as the engineer in the room do your work. Again, I love how Sophie put this together about just like an engineer is there to witness your problem solving. Like that word is so key because yes, it kind of can seem like they're trying to grade you. And at the end of the day, they are, they're going to critique you on all of that. But you as a candidate, really the best way you can think about it is literally someone's just there to watch you and guide you through problem solving because when it comes to actually working, that's what it's gonna be about. So in the technical interview itself, one fix with all of this is to ask questions about direction to your interviewer. Like imagine that they're a collaborator, except maybe they know one or two more pointers than you. So confirm that you're going towards the right direction. So say things like, based on ABC, I'm thinking of going towards XYZ and implementing it this way. Like, what do you think? Or you can also ask things like, is it safe to assume that DEF is going to always be true? This is a totally harmless thing to do, so long as you're not asking your interviewer like, yo, interviewer, throw me a bone, like tell me what to do next, or like, hey, give me the solution. Don't do that. That's, that, like, that's, no. Like, your interviewer is not your teacher, they're your collaborator. But asking questions, confirming where you're going, make sure that you're focused and you're on the right track, and it gives the interviewer an inside view into how you're thinking. Which again, they are there to witness you and get a window into how you think and approach a problem to begin with. Otherwise, don't you think that a lot of these technical interviews, they'd be like, here's a code snippet, solve it and send it back to us whenever you want. Which is the case sometimes, but hardly like, is it an actually really great way to figure out who's gonna be a good engineer on your team and who's not. Okay, but like, why is the technical side important? Like, why do we need technical interviews then? Because software engineers are hired to code, right? So isn't that the whole reason? Yes, but 
Imagine working with an engineer who never thinks their solution and hastily creates code, thus creating mountains of spaghetti code, can't produce their own unique code and can't solve unique problems, and or can't explain their solutions on what they wrote. Like that would suck, right? So yes, that's the kind of engineer that you want to avoid becoming and thus is the type of engineer that companies want to avoid hiring. Granted, the most important factor of technical interviews is to know whether you're able to solve problems and if you know your stuff. But the behavioral side of technical interviews has a ton of weight to it, more than you might think. When, when things get really contentious, on whether we, we accept someone or not, it is always the behavioral side that makes the call. Because really the thing that most reveals who you are and shows your employer how you tick is going to be shown in the behavioral side of the interview. This is where they're going to really understand the value that you add to your team by seeing how you work. Like, do you produce code that's easy to reason about? Do you think about how other people are gonna use the code other than yourself? Are you able to explain and teach concepts that you know to make people on your team better engineers? And are you just like a respectful and kind collaborator that people like working with? So yeah, technical interviews are definitely the most stressful and hardest part of the interview process. And yes, at the end of the day, it's the interview that's going to suss out your technical skill. So you definitely do need to study up on data structures and algorithms and systems design questions. But just remember that they're also really assessing you on other stuff too. Technical interviews, in fact, are the closest simulation they'll get to what it'd be like to actually work with you. So when you're studying for these interviews, yes, use Leet Code, Cracking the Coding Interview, Brilliant, or whatever resources are out there to study. But I really highly recommend you to try recording yourself solving these problems, studying with a friend or partner or someone close to you, do like a mock interview or something who can give you constructive feedback on how to make the behavioral side of your interview better. And in order to get good feedback, think about the kind of engineer that you wanna be, the kind of problem solver that you wanna be, and the kind of teammate that you wanna be. Once you have those answers to that, you'll get good feedback and you'll be able to show off all of that in the interview. And ultimately, that's what companies wanna see from you. The fact that you can solve technical problems in a very nice, collaborative, kind way that actually solves problems well, where you can explain your solution, if that wasn't clear. Thank you so much to Sophie from Formation.dev for being a part of this video and sharing your insight. I'll leave her link in the description box down below. And also thank you so much to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. So if you have heard me talk about Brilliant before, then you know that it's a platform dedicated to active problem solving. Because I am a strong believer that in order to really true learn something, you can't just be watching it or reading about it, you have to actually be doing it. And Brilliant's platform is perfect for this because all of their courses are super interactive and allow you to really engage with the material. Brilliant has recently upped their interactivity on their platform to a brand new level. So you're really gonna benefit from learning and reinforcing and studying up on things like algorithms on Brilliant. Because you know, the thing about studying for technical interviews is that you can't just read through problems. You have to actually like go and do it and engage with it and write pseudocode and understand how things work. You can take the courses on Brilliant at your own pace. So if you'd like to try out Brilliant for free and get 20% off a year of STEM learning, then click the link in the description box down below or visit brilliant.org slash hello Mayuko. Thank you so much for watching and maybe share this with someone who's like going through the technical interview process right now. I know it's a lot of different stuff to balance, but trust me, if you get this right and you are really good at technical interviews, both the really technical coding part and the behavioral part, then you're gonna do well. By the way, if you have any questions about technical interviewing that you want me to answer, then I'm gonna reply to every comment that's on my exclusive bonus content that I put out just for members. Uh, there's gonna be one paired with this video, and so you can become a member for as low as 99 cents a month, get access to exclusive perks, and ask your question there. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for more content about tech career and life from me, and I'll see you next time. Bye.